So once there was a pregnant lady who went into the labor ward and the nurse told her, Madam, please wait five minutes for me to deliver your baby. To this, the pregnant lady said, No thanks, I would actually like my baby to keep her liver. <laughs> Hello everybody, it's Ryan here. I hope you and your family are well. Thanks for joining me on another fun video, an informative video on this channel, Internal Medicine Algorithms and Mnemonics. Thank you so much for joining me. I love the pleasure of your company. Today we're talking about liver abscess. Here's an outline of the talk. We're going to cover a clinical case for context as usual. Then we're going to break down liver abscess in terms of an introduction and then the variety of etiologies behind it. We're going to cover the signs and symptoms that patients present with a plausible differential diagnosis, how to work up the patients diagnostically, treatment and management modalities, prognosis of complications, then we're going to end up with some scripture from the Bible. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining me. Guys, let's get stuck into this case. We've got a quite an elderly 77-year-old man who comes to you with a history, um, a week's history of fever, chills, nausea, and right upper quadrant pain. Hmm. His temperature is a whopping 39 degrees Celsius, so he is pyrexial and he appears toxic. Blood pressure 110, 70, so slightly hypotensive. Tachycardic at 110 beats per minute. Tichopnic at 22 breaths per minute with a room air saturation of 92%. He has diminished breath sounds at the right base and diffuse tenderness in the right upper quadrant. <clears throat> he has a history of cholelithiasis, cholelithiasis, gallstones, but has declined elective cholecystectomy. Hmm. His CD scan of the abdomen is shown on the next slide. Which of the following statements regarding his condition or therapy are true? Let's have a quick squiz at this CT scan. Okay, come back to the question. Which of the following statements regarding his condition or therapy are true? A. Concomitant bacteremia is rare in less than 10%. B. He should receive empiric antibiotics targeting candida species. C. He should receive empiric antibiotics targeting anaerobic organisms. Mm. D. He should undergo percutaneous drainage. <coughs> Excuse me. E. His syrup alkaline phosphate is most likely normal. Guys, liver abscesses are typically classified as pyogenic, which speaks to bacterial etiology or amoebic due to entamoeba histolytica, which is a protozoan, right? Now, both of these share clinical features and are often described together. They may be solitary or multifocal. Now, bacteria reach the liver through the biliary tract in 50% of cases, or they can come via the blood, hepatic artery, portal vein, direct inoculation, or through direct extension from contiguous organs. Now, amoebic abscesses classically caused by entamoeba histolytica are endemic in many developing countries and may be imported from other countries via travelers. Fungal and CMV abscesses may occur in those who are immunocompromised and have a very different presentation. Okay, let's look at etiology, epidemiology, and risk factors, guys. <clears throat> so infection usually requires underlying liver disease, usually a patient who has underlying cirrhosis, and bacterial access through an anatomical route, be it via the biliary tree, the portal vein, or the hepatic artery, or from a contiguous location be it the diaphragm, the colon, or penetrating trauma. So common primary infectious sources include appendicitis, cholecystitis or cholangitis, pelvic inflammatory disease, or diverticulitis. In normal hosts, the liver is capable of clearing these organisms, but in the presence of hepatic disease, clearance is impaired. Remember the all-important Kupfer cells, which are the macrophages, which have an important immune function in the liver. In instances where no primary infection can be found, the abscess is termed cryptogenic. <clears throat> Anaerobic bacteria, our classic uh, poster kits for that is Bacteroides, Fuso Fusobacterium, uh, Actinomyces, and Clostridium are isolated in some 50% of hepatic abscesses. All right. Risk factors, of course, include biliary tract obstruction, hepatic surgery, hepatic malignancy, yeah, hepatic cell carcinoma, big player in the game there, and immunocompromised states, diabetes, any immunocompromised state, if the patient's taking steroids, if they've got a malignancy going on, cardiopulmonary disease, penetrating abdominal injuries. Now, most pyogenic liver abscesses are polymicrobial, but the typical bacterial pathogens include your enteric gram-negative backslide. We mentioned some of those, actinomyces and uh, fusobacterium, streptococci, enterococci, staphylococci. How do patients present? Well, signs and symptoms are not very uh, kind of specific, right? Classically, patients present with a days to weeks of fever, chills, 
right upper quadrant pain. They tend to hepatomegaly in some 50 to 70 percent of cases. Some of them may actually present with pain in the shoulder because remember C7 innervates the diaphragm and if there's impingement of the diaphragm by inflammation that can cause referred pain to the shoulder, the ipsilateral shoulder. Uh, jaundice is not typically seen unless there is concomitant cholangitis. Abscess high in the right lobe can cause respiratory symptoms such as pruritic chest pain and cough. And maybe hepatic abscesses usually have a recent history of diarrhea, may present without fever, but not always. Okay. Differential diagnosis for this kind of presentation includes cholecystitis, cholangitis, empyema of the gallbladder, right lower lobe pneumonia, pulmonary infarct, intestinal obstruction, hepatitis, the infamous Fitzhugh Curtis syndrome, which is a perihepatitis on the back of pulmonary um, um, pelvic inflammatory disease, all right? Pancreatitis, nephrotitis, pyelonephritis, malignancy, pancreatic abscess, tumor-related fever. Guys, how do we evaluate someone in whom we think there may be a liver abscess? Ultrasound, right? Ultrasound, ultrasound of the liver uh, is most commonly used to image the bullet each tree, right? The CD scan with contrast has a higher sensitivity than does ultrasound and is a preferred modality, or especially when you're guiding percutaneous drainage, particularly in post-operative patients we have abnormal anatomy. MRI has a small advantage over CT, uh, but cannot be used to guide aspiration, right? Routine labs will show you leukocytosis and an increased alkaline phosphatase. That is a, a, a giveaway. 50% of patients with pyogenic abscess will have positive blood cultures on account of septicemia. A plain uh, PA chest X-ray film will show elevation of the right hemidiaphragm. Once suspected, we must get tissue. Tissue is the issue, guys. Tissue must be obtained for gram stain and culture. Amoebic abscess may be difficult to diagnose as the pathogens may not be recovered from the puddle of material. However, a very big clue is that when you aspirate that fluid um, from the liver abscess under ultrasound or CT guidance, what you find is a sterile brownish aspirate typically described as <laughs> anchovy paste. Yummy! Oh. So it looks like anchovy paste if you aspirate that fluid from the liver abscess. Amoebic abscess is confirmed by visualization of entamoeba histolytica from an aspirate, right? Amoebic serologies may also be used to confirm the diagnosis, so you can do an amoebic gel diffusion test, or you can simply do an ELISA test for entamoeba histolytica. There may be secondary bacterial overgrowth. So this is actually um, the CT from our clinical case today. It shows a multilocular liver abscess on CT. Multiple, right, there we go. Or multilocular abscesses are more common than yeah, solitary abscesses. There we go. Liver abscess. Okay, guys, treatment and management. Pyogenic abscess is treated by drainage and intravenous antibiotics. Now, percutaneous guided drainage, either by CT or ultrasound guidance, is the mainstay of therapy. However, the disadvantage of percutaneous drainage is that the primary source of infection is unknown and remains untreated. Repeated aspiration and drain placements are recommended if more than 250 mils are obtained initially. Usually you want to you know, do this procedure under ultrasound guidance and leave in a catheter. Right? So you can constantly aspirate right? and to dryness essentially. Follow-up imaging should be completed every week while a drain is in place and more frequently if a drain is not left in place. Open surgical drainage may allow definitive treatment of the underlying cause. Surgical resection may be required if you're dealing with a left lobe abscess or an abscess larger than 5 centimeters, right? Um, so antibiotic therapy should be targeted towards our beloved anaerobic bacteria, Cryptococci and Enterobacteria C are coming from the bowel. So appropriate initial, you know, initial empiric choices include a carbapenem, a penicillin penicillinase inhibitor, like Augmentin, or a third generation keftosporin, like keftraxone, plus your gram-negative cover, like metronidazole. Therapy is then tailored to the, blood, the cultures that you get from the uh, aspiration of the, the liver abscess. Duration of therapy can range from 4 to 16 weeks depending on the response. Amoebic abscesses are treated with metronidazole 3 times a day for 7 to 14 days. Percutaneous drainage may be necessary for larger abscesses. Now, as per the South African treatment guidelines, very important question to ask guys, when do you want to drain a liver abscess? Hmm... Well, if it's a pyogenic liver abscess, all cases ideally should be drained, preferably done, like we said, percutaneously with catheter or drain insertion under ultrasound guidance. If it's an amoebic liver abscess, you want to drain it in three circumstances. Number one, if it's a large liver abscess above 10 centimeters in diameter. Number two, if it involves the left lobe of the liver. Number three, if it's near the surface of the liver because of the risk of rupture and the seeding. So, once more, 
A mean because of abscess is drained under three circumstances. Number one, if it's a large abscess, more than 10 centimeters in diameter. Number two, if it involves the left lobe of the liver. Number three, if it's near the surface of the liver, very kind of superficial because of the risk of rupture and seeding. Right, this is a beautiful algorithm taken from Harrison's, just showing us essentially uh, how to manage patients with intra-abdominal abscesses by percutaneous drainage. Antimicrobial therapy should be administered concomitantly. So you do your percutaneous drainage. So in this instance, we're talking about a liver abscess. You drain it percutaneously. You should see defervescence by 24 to 48 hours. That fever should be gone. If there's no improvement by 48 hours, you want to repeat the CD scan with dilute hypake injection into the cavity, attempt further drainage. Right? If you've got successful drainage and defervescence, that's wonderful. Just drain out when the catheter, uh, 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 when the criteria for the catheter removal are satisfied. If there's no drainage or no improvement in the clinical state of the patient, then you want to progress to surgery. All right. Let's prognosticate and talk about complications, guys. Untreated pyogenic liver abscess is uniformly fatal in 95 to 100%. Untreated amoebic abscess has a 5% mortality rate. Failure to respond to anti amoebic therapy may result in secondary bacterial infection. Abscess rupture, be it either intraperitoneally or intrathoracically, is the most dreaded complication. If pyogenic the fatality occurs in 95 to 100% of cases following rupture, rupture of amoebic abscess carries a lesser mortality of 18 to 30%. Guys, coming back to our clinical case, let's just rehash this to refresh our memory. And an elderly gentleman comes in with a week of fever, chills, nausea, right upper quadrant pain, it's pyrexial, he's hypotensive, tachycardic, tachypnic, he has diminished spread sounds with the right base and tender in the uh, right upper quadrant, history of uh, gallstones, but didn't go for cholecystectomy. CT shows, you know, multilocular liver abscesses. Right? Which of the following statements regarding his condition of therapy are true? And the answer is. D, indeed, he should undergo percutaneous drainage. So that CT that we, we saw showed a large, complex, multiloculated liver abscess in the right lobe. Drainage usually percutaneous or under autosome guidance is the mainstay of therapy useful diagnostically. Okay, my friends, it's time to talk about scripture. Right, let's just talk about um, what the Bible has to say about the importance of comparing everything with scripture. The best commentary for the Bible is the Bible. And one scripture sheds light on another. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 says, Test everything and hold on to what is good. 2 Timothy 3.16-17 says, All scripture, not some scripture, all scripture is God-breathed and useful for TCRT, teaching, correcting, rebuking, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The Bible is our blueprint for life. It's our guideline for living. Um, the psalmist said that your word, O oh Lord, is a light unto my uh, path, you know, um, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So it illuminates the way for us to live. If ever you are confused about any issue in life, if ever you are ever anxious about any particular problem, just commit it to God in prayer, but look at Scripture to see what the Word of God has to reveal to you in that given situation and ask the Holy Spirit for help. He will guide you. Okay, here are my references, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you enjoyed this content, I encourage you to subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel, right? And hit that like and share button. I'm also on uh, Instagram and Facebook and on TikTok. Just search for Internal Medicine Algorithms and Mnemonics. I look forward to seeing you soon. We're going to cover a very dry topic soon. Psoriasis. <laughs> God bless.